If you don't believe in providence, I have an interesting tale to tell you this morning. How I actually arrived at the Easter message for today, which, by the way, is the shortest Easter message I've ever written. <laughs> but this past week, I was Googling. I don't know how many people here are suffering from allergies now. Okay. Well, I have been living on these mentholated cough drops because I got rid of all the congestion and I've gotten rid of everything but this horrible dry cough. <clears throat> so I was actually Googling natural ways to rid yourself of this cough. You know, what? So I don't have these cough drops. I just want something natural. And I was looking to see if there were specific foods I should eat and whatnot. And one of the dangers of being retired is all of a sudden you have time to click on all these other links that, are in the <laughs> that you're reading. And so I accidentally discovered this little website, and it was a great website, and I have to admit to you, I spent about 45 minutes on this website. <laughs> but it was uh, created to spark imagination in creative writers. And if you really want to go to it, it's smart, S-M-A-R-T dot net. And it's an online magazine, and the premise of the whole magazine and website is people sharing a collection of their memoirs and what their life essence is in six words. <clears throat> and on this website, there are both people, famous people, ordinary people, distilling their lives and who they are down into six words. And that challenge is open to anyone. You can, you can go on there right now and post what your life means in six words. And so I got to thinking, how challenging would it be for any of us to fit the essence of who we are in only six words? One person on the website answered the challenge with the, this phrase, it all changed in a minute. It all changed in a minute. And someone else who was recovering from a breakup wrote, I still make coffee for two. And one of my favorites was Stephen Colbert, one of my favorite comedians. Stephen Colbert wrote, well, I thought it was funny. <laughs> and the screenwriter Nora Ephron was on there and she said the secret of life marry an Italian <laughs> <laughs> our gospel lesson this morning distills the essence of Christianity in the six little words in the Bible, there are approximately 775,000 words, and not one of them makes any sense or matters or carries any importance without these six little words. In the world today, there are about 2 billion professing Christians in the world, and not a one of us can explain our faith or tell anybody about who we are as Christians without using these six little words. These words are found this morning in the breathless words of some women who had gone to an empty tomb and ran back to the men and gave them good news. These are words that from this point on, on that first Easter Sunday, moved from person to person community to community and age to age as words of faith that we as Christians still proclaim today. If you'd like to follow along in our lesson for today, the gospel we'll be looking at is the gospel of Luke. We're going to be looking at the 24th chapter at the first 12 verses of that chapter. And so now I invite you to hear the word of the Lord. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. 
While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He's not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others gathered there. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women, because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away wondering to himself what had happened. This ends our gospel reading for the day. This is the word of God, and it can be trusted. Thanks be to God. So did you catch it? It's these six words that I'm talking about that has taken a scattered and broken people who are lost to becoming the world's largest religion. It is these six words that have transformed broken lives into whole lives. These six words have found people who were lost in suffering and pain, losing their lives to sadness, and brought them all to new life. These are the words that are whispered at a bedside or shouted from a mountaintop. Words that are shared around dinner tables as well as workplaces and schools. These six words have been forbidden by government, but still have somehow been spoken and shared throughout the ages. And those six words are, Jesus is risen from the dead. Jesus is risen from the dead. Right, right. These are the words that martyrs have cried out as they were burned at the stake. These are the words that the famous theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer taught his students in a secret seminary in a Nazi prison. These are words that Oscar Romero, as he was celebrating Holy Communion, and was gunned down in El Salvador, screamed at his congregation. These are the words that inspired Dr. Martin Luther King to stand up against systemic and violent racism here in America. Jesus is risen from the dead. The Apostle Paul writes in his letter to the Corinthians that if these words are not true, then we of all people are to be the most pitied as incredible as it may be to believe. And in spite of humanity's continuing suffering and pain and all that we're going through, we as Christians still say, Jesus is risen from the dead. C.S. Lewis wrote, I believe in Christianity as I believe the sun has risen. Not only because I see it, but because by it I see everything. What could we possibly use to measure the power of those six little words? How could we ever see the impact that these words have had on this world? Look around. Feast on the joys and forgiveness. Look at the reconciliation and the self-giving love that has taken place all over the world in spite of the evil that exists here since these incredible words were first spoken. These six little words form the story of our lives as Christians. It's actually the story of life itself. It's the story of how life and love are stronger than death and hate. And so in Easter, we hear these six words, and we understand very deeply that our life is completely wrapped up in the essence of their meaning. Jesus is risen from the dead. Now we have the opportunity, like the ladies at the tomb, to run and tell others what we've experienced. Amen. Amen.